are a part, and I'm so glad that we have been a part of this for seven years. We are raising up world changers, and I'm excited about that. Travis is just one example of that. Another one of the students that I had such a great privilege to be able to work with and is another son of this house is Luke Ajari. <laughs> Luke, come on up here, son. I'm going to hand the microphone right to you and just let you take off. But Luke has been working. I don't even take any of that away. I want you to be able to share with everybody what's been happening. How's that? I'd hate to take something away, but I'm so proud of you, Luke. This right here, I'm telling you, Heartland, you're getting a good look at what we've been churning out at the Heartland School of Ministry, and it's been well worth it. Thank you. Give it up for Pastor Daniel. I, uh, I'm very excited to be with you today, but before I share my vision and my heart and what's been going on in, in me post-graduation, post Heartland School of Ministry. I have to read a quote to you. Our pastor two years ago, or a little over three years ago actually, February 11th, 2007, preached a message about the School of Ministry. And he called it Raising Up World Changers and shared the vision we've been sharing with you today. We exist to raise up world changers. And he quoted something in that sermon that stuck out to me that has been burning in my spirit. And I want to read it to you doing the best Pastor Steve Hill impression I can. <laughs> Friend, the first thing, friend, is that good? Friend, the first thing I look for in any young man or woman when it comes to the ministry is passion. Just passion. Because the preaching skills will come. You don't have to be a great orator or have an incredibly lengthy education or have degrees on the wall if you Am I right? Kelsey, how'd I do? See, Pastor Steve, our pastor in this house, recognizes something. As long as you have a passion for God, you can conquer the world. And Heartland School of Ministry, as Travis so very well put it, exists to create and cultivate and be a greenhouse for passion for God. You're not going to get the best of the best degree on the wall after you graduate Heartland School of Ministry, but what you will get is a passion for God that is unmatched. I can't tell you what you can do post-Heartland. I can't tell you what everybody, I can't guarantee a six-figure salary after Heartland School of Ministry, but I can guarantee a passion for God will be cultivated in your life. Heartland is a place of passion, and not just the school. The school's great, the school's good, the school cultivates passion, but this church as a whole is a house of passion for God. And I have no doubt that everyone in this building has that great passion for God has that zeal and that, that, that passion, I don't know how else to put it, just that incredible fervor for the things of God. We've all got a fire, like Jeremiah says, I feel like there's a fire that is shut up inside of my bones. We all have that. Now, the only problem is we don't do anything with it. And I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook because I believe Facebook has become our outlet for our passion. And all we do with our passion for God is put cute little 140 character status updates on Facebook or Twitter. And that is our outlet for our passion. So the question isn't, do you have a passion for God? The question is, what are you going to do with your passion for God? That's the question I posed for you this morning. And when I graduated high school in 2006, I decided I was going to walk through an open door. Heartland School of Ministry was that open door for me. And I decided I was going to step through. I was the weird kid, the dorky kid, you know, m whose mom buys them the Walmart clearance rack clothes. You remember that was me. If you need an example of that, you can look over here on a red line section. And, and I'm, I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. We have, we have a Monday night small group that meets, and um, some of them, like, when I'm not there, I'm traveling. I'll tell you about that in a second. When I'm traveling or whatever, some of them sneak into my closet and pull out my clothes and write me all kinds of notes and everything, so I had to get them back. But anyway, I've been working with a ministry called Youth Alive. Everybody say Youth Alive. Post Heartland, after walking through that open door, another door opened post Heartland of Youth Alive. A man named Kyle Embry, who is our Youth Alive missionary to North Texas. He actually attends this church. Many of you may have seen him when he's not here. Right now he's in Austin preaching up a fit, communicating the Youth Alive vision. And I could not be more excited about what God's doing. Youth Alive is all about getting in the public schools. Hello. Getting in the public schools. I don't know if you've seen our school systems lately. They're a mess. They need Jesus. They need people who have a passion for God to step through open doors and change something. 
And I, I'm sorry, camera guys, I'm all over the place. But I want to read to you a scripture that has jumped out at me lately. Revelation 3, 7, and 8. And it says this, To the angel at the church of Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and not deny my name. And church, this morning, the Lord says that I have placed before you an open door. Maybe it's not Heartland School of Ministry. Maybe you can't pack up your life and fit it into a school schedule and go to Heartland School of Ministry. But you have an open door in front of you, other than Facebook, to channel your passion for God. Youth Alive for me became that channel, that open door, and I decided I was going to step through and take it. And since then, have been traveling all over the North Texas district with the Assemblies of God, which goes about three and a half hours in every direction, and communicate the vision of being a campus missionary to students, saying, you know what, you don't have to wait to fulfill the call of God in your life. And I'll preach in in churches of uh, youth groups of 200, I'll preach in groups of two. And communicate the vision and say, you know what, you can be a missionary to your school campus. You do not have to wait to move to Zimbabwe and minister in a hut with people wearing loincloths and big wooden gauges in their ears. You can be a missionary right now to your school. Man, I could preach this morning. Y'all got another couple hours? I mean, we could keep going. We communicate this vision with students, and we get talking, and students get fired up. One kid, I'll never forget him, his name was Dan. We communicated this vision to Dan, saying, Dan, you can be a campus missionary. Communicated to to his church in Denton. Dan from Denton, Dan caught the vision, decided he was going to be a missionary to the school campus. He picked up and ran with it. And Dan's not the kind of kid that we think about getting a cool school campus saved. We think, I'm going to stand on the school lunchroom cafeteria table. I'm going to take my shirt off and wave it around my head and get everybody's attention or something crazy like that. Right? That's what we think. But Dan's not going to do that. Dan's not this crazy kid. He's not like me who get up and jump and scream and holler and throw things at the wall or anything like that. But Dan had a passion for God and decided to channel it. And all he did was bring his Bible to school. Okay, simple. He just grabs, and borrow this for a second. He just grabs his big, fat, juicy Bible, brings it to school, and plops it up on his desk. Five minutes before class started, that's all Dan did. Dan, like Revelation 3 says, Dan stepped through the open door. Dan took the open door and just stepped through it and plopped his Bible on his desk. Kid comes up behind Dan and says, Dan, what is that? Is that a Bible? He has a kind of attitude about him, and Dan says, yeah, it's my Bible. Kid goes, dude. My mom says that's the biggest waste of time and the biggest waste of money and that we should just stay away from it. Whoa. Just goes to show that's what our kids are being taught, even in the Metroplex, even in the Bible Belt. Our kids are being taught the Bible's a waste of time and a waste of money, and Dan had an opportunity. He took it. He jumped on it, and he says, you know what, dude, all respect to your mom, whatever, but it's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of money. It's changed my life. Let me tell you about it. Bell rings, class starts, can't say anything else. Passing period comes, the next next period. This kid comes up to Dan and says, Dan, what were you talking about, the Bible changing your life? What was that all about? Dan tells him his story, what God's done for him. The kid gives his heart to the Lord in school that day. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on. I was in... Um, we were in Belton, Texas a couple months ago. We do another part of Youth Alive is the Seven Project. Anyone ever heard of the Seven Project? We go to schools and, and do assemblies during the day. We can't preach Jesus during the day. It's very similar to the power team. We, can't, we don't rip phone books or anything. We have a great media team that goes with us. But we go in and we can't preach Jesus during the day. But we talk about you save yourself for marriage. Don't do drugs. Don't bully. All that kind of good stuff that school principals give a good golf clap about. And we invite kids back at night and say, hey, if you want to hear the rest of our story, come back tonight. If you want to hear a little bit more about this, come back tonight and kind of give them a little hook. We give away toys, iPods. We have a mechanical bull at one of them. We're doing one this Wednesday in Terrell, Texas. We rented out a pack center. We're expecting 1,500 kids to fill the thing. Two mechanical bulls, several other things going on. That's what Seven Project is all about. We did one in March, like I was saying, invite the kids back. We spoke two school assemblies during the day, invited them back. 400 kids came back that night. Wow, now, now that's cool. We'll give a big cl- clap. That's great for a church, but this is in a school. 
This isn't in a church. This is in a public school. Kids are coming back. We preach Jesus. I get up and share my testimony and say, hey, I'm 23 years old, and I'm a virgin. And if I can wait, you can wait too. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle gets up and shares a message and talks about being broken for God and reads out of Jeremiah and says, if Jeremiah came to God broken, we can all come to God broken, and he restores us. Give us salvation, altar call. And that night, March the 8th of 2010, 225 kids gave their hearts to Christ for the very first time. Okay, now I was working in a busy restaurant on Friday night when Felice threw the last strikeout pitch to A-Rod, and I heard a busy bar go nuts that the Rangers are going to the World Series, and I'm as excited about that as anybody else. But I get more excited when 225 souls are snatched from the flames of hell. Come on, somebody. That's why this church exists. Yes. Yes. I praise God for what he's doing. It's coming up again. We're going to be in Terrell, Texas this Wednesday night. I could not be more pumped about it. Please keep us in your prayers. And if I could communicate anything to you, post HSM. What can Heartland do for you? It's a greenhouse for passion. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I got to take a breath after that, Luke. I got to breathe, man. <laughs> that is that is awesome. Uh, 